Hey, Kevin, what are you doing? Something I don't get to play with that often. So what kind of differences can you expect you know, between TIG welding on stainless steel versus TIG welding on mild steel? Not really much. You're going to need a little more amperage out of the machine because stainless is just a little tougher, it's a little denser metal. So you got to have a little more horsepower to dig down into it. Of course you have to have the correct filler rod to be able to weld it so everything stays you know, stainless so you can have it you know, rust resistant the way it's supposed to be. Bright, shiny, clean, you know, polish, polish, polish. The cleaner, the better. You know, uh, stainless loves to be clean when you weld it. Get it all clamped down, everything stays flat, you're good to go. But now, the difference between TIG welding stainless and MIG welding stainless, oh, that's a whole different world. With the TIG welder, just running straight argon, 100% argon. With a MIG welder, you're going to want a tri-mix. You're going to want argon, CO2, with a little bit of helium thrown into it, just to up the temperature a little bit. Get that, get that arc just a little bit hotter. Just like I'm going to turn up the amps here, that does the same thing for you with the MIG welder. It's still going to be kind of smoky, kind of dirty. You know, you're still going to have more cleanup to do with it, but that at least lets you do it with MIG. So just to set up this Everlast Power TIG 255 EXT TIG welder, so right at the moment, it's still in AC from the aluminum I was doing. So let's get out of there. We'll get over to DC. I know I'm working with 125,000 stainless steel. So 125,000, you know, 125 amps. Nah, I'm gonna bump that up to about 135, just to give me that little extra horsepower I want to do the stainless, to weld on the stainless, and take into account that nice cold, one inch thick plate steel tabletop that it's bolted, you know, it's uh, clamped down to right at the moment. So that's going to suck up a bunch of heat also. So I may come back and even bump it up a little more. But let me put my helmet on and we'll light an arc and see what we get. So let me just tack it in a few places and we'll get started. All right, let's run one, run a bead here. So this was my first tack right here. Then about halfway down, there's my second tack. And then at the other end, here's my third tack over in here. And then just jump back to the beginning, ran a nice little bead along here, got some nice color going on in that, hopped over that tack and ran another little bead right through here and broke it off. Let's flip it over and see what's on the other side. So I got a little heat affected area there. You know, it changed color a little bit. I can't see where anything, any of the weld tried to burn its way through. So I think that's just a, a good indication of A, I might have been a little too cold on my amperage, or B, this big old tabletop just sucking all the heat out of it, not letting the weld dig down in there as much as it could. More practice for me, but that gives you a basic idea what to do when you're all done with the steel. You got to do the, the finish work to get it ready to go outside in the world where it belongs and it'll last a long, long time, guys. So I really appreciate y'all watching. You get the chance, pop out to my website. The address is right here. See some of the crazy things that I create in this place. And we'll see you next time. Sure. Poof, gone.